Jesus and the news on uh, this uh, important topic. People uh, hold the various views about uh, the influence of uh, Christianity in Africa. And uh, right now, there are no uh, accepted answers to the problems and questions raised uh, on this topic. Uh, you all know that uh, for centuries, traditional African religion uh, has been subjected to a number of alien influences, some having far-reaching uh, effects on the continent and its social, political, and religious institutions. It is not my intention to discuss uh, the effects of all these influences. Uh, although in terms of its earlier position and perhaps the number of its ad adherents Islam may have a proud claim among these external forces. I propose rather to look at the work of the uh, missionaries, the Christian missionaries, mainly because the geographical area of my own uh, specialization, that is Ghana, has few indigenous Muslims. While nearly half of the total population of uh, this country, that is Ghana, are at least nominal Christians. Moreover, although uh, Christianity was introduced much later than Islam, it has as much following uh, throughout uh, West Africa. Christianity was introduced into what is now Ghana in the middle of the 19th century. And today, Almost uh, without exception, at least one of uh, the several denominations uh, represented uh, in the country have chapels and schools in any settlement having a population of uh, more than 500. The important uh, Christian denominations uh, in this country are the uh, Roman Catholic Church, the Presbyterian Church, the Anglican Church, and the Methodist Church. The Salvation Army is also represented, uh, but they are not uh, very important in terms of the numbers of their adherents. But before Christianity came, and indeed before any of the uh, foreign religions came onto the continent, Africans had their own religion. And this is what many people forget when they are talking about missionaries. And the religious picture we find today cannot be fully understood without reference to our traditional religious beliefs. Because the changes which are now taking place in our religious institutions are influenced and are directed by the traditional religious systems which preceded uh, Christianity. I therefore begin uh, by uh, giving you a generalized uh, picture of traditional West African religion. I said generalized because although certain religious practices are common to most African societies, differences do exist in beliefs, organization, and details of practice. The most powerful uh, supernatural being in uh, most religious uh, traditional religious uh, institutions in West Africa is what uh, is uh, variously called the supreme being, the creator God, or the high God. The supreme being, the creator God, or the high God. What are the qualities of this high God, or the creator God, or the supreme being? In a number of societies, the qualities ascribed to this God are that uh, he is omnipotent. He is the wisest, the source of all knowledge, the source of all power. He is the creator of all things and the source of all power and wisdom. He only does what uh, he considers good for man. He creates everything according to his wish and uh, 
since uh, he doesn't want anybody to, uh, 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 he doesn't want everybody to be the same, differences do occur. That is, differences do occur in the lots of uh, men. Some are born rich, others poor, and so on. God sends everybody into this world, each according to uh, his uh, qualities. These are popular sayings in many religious systems of West Africa. According to many West Africans, the Creator God was living in the world amongst men, very close to them. But because of the frequent demands on him by his creations, that is men, he disappeared into the skies. And therefore, today, he's so far away that he cannot be approached directly. He therefore has to be worshipped through small gods who are his creations. An idea about uh, how people look at uh, the supreme being can be uh, seen from uh, the titles uh, they give to, uh, to him. The Ashantis, for instance, one of the best known West African societies, they have the following uh, titles for the supreme being. He is, according to them, Onyakupon, meaning he is alone. He is the great one. They also call, call him Chuadupong, that is the dependable one. He is also the Otumfo, the powerful one. He is Odomakuma, the eternal one. And Anasin Kokoroko, the great spider. That is the wisest being on earth. The reference to spider here, of course, refers to uh, uh, the fact that uh, in many Ashanti and West African uh, folk stories, the spider is the, uh, the hero and is always uh, uh, painted as the wisest being on earth. That is why the supreme being is called the great spider, the wisest person. So this is the West African's uh, view of uh, uh, the Supreme Being. And as I said already, he has now removed himself uh, far away from uh, the cares of the world and therefore has to be worshipped through uh, the small gods. This small gods through whom uh, the Supreme Being is now worshipped uh, are known to be his creations and therefore they derive their powers from him. Nothing can be done by these small gods without a reference to the Supreme Being. The priests of these small gods will always tell you that uh, they can only perform uh, their duties. Their sacrifices can only be uh, successful if the Supreme Being supports what they are doing. Now, most of these uh, small gods uh, are associated with nature objects. Nature objects like uh, springs, rivers, stones, forests, and so on. And they, they differ in their powers as well as uh, in the areas of activity, human activity, which they, they specialize. But perhaps the, the most important uh, supernatural beings in the lives of many West Africans are the ancestors. There is a belief that when people die, that is not their end. They go into the world of spirits where they are able to watch over the affairs of those they left behind. Therefore, it is uh, the duty of uh, those they leave behind to give them worship, or at least to remember them in their everyday activities. This is seen in many homes. Among the Ewe, for instance, at night, a number of things are forbidden because this is the time the ancestors are believed to return to their homes. Sweeping is uh, forbidden because you cannot see the ancestors and as you, if you sweep at night, you may sweep against them. Water must be left when uh, people are going to, uh, to bed because the ancestors may come and drink. Food must be left 
at uh, a strategic point for them to, uh, to see easily when they arrive. And a number of other things are forbidden. This all show the importance attached to uh, the ancestors. Also, people show their, their respect for the ancestors by uh, how organizing a number of uh, ceremonies, rituals for them. There are also a number of specific uh, activities and practices associated with individuals. For instance, uh, a person will pour the first uh, drop of water uh, on the ground before satisfying himself. The first drop is, of course, for the ancestors. He may drop uh, uh, the first morsel of food before satisfying himself. Again, the first uh, drop is uh, for the ancestors. People drinking alcohol do the same. All these are in remembrance of the ancestors. But the ancestors are also worshipped in a group. These are done mainly by the same groups as well as by political units. There are also beliefs in uh, other supernatural forces like charms, herbs, uh, sorcery, witchcraft, and so on. The belief in uh, charms, herbs, and sorcery stems from the belief that uh, it is uh, within the powers of uh, uh, human beings to manipulate this, uh, uh, to manipulate a number of uh, objects to achieve certain things with the help of God. So a number of leaves and herbs are believed to possess this, uh, these powers, which can be manipulated to effect certain things. Witchcraft, on the other hand, is a belief that certain people are endowed with certain supernatural forces which they can use to uh, harm others. Witchcraft, witchcraft is necessarily a negative force in society. Witches don't do anything good. They only do bad. Charms, however, can be, do, uh, can be used for uh, bad and good uh, uh, things. Herbs, the same. And uh, in, the, in the West African uh, case, uh, sorcery is very difficult to place. Uh, as far as its uh, functions. Sorcerers sometimes use their sorcery to cure others, but mostly they are for bad purposes. Africans, uh, or West Africans, also believe that uh, uh, for a cure of diseases and uh, other misfortunes to be effected, it is necessary to know the cause the causes of uh, misfortunes, of sickness, of death must be known. And therefore, they place a great uh, premium on the uh, function of uh, diviners. And uh, we have a number of systems of di uh, divination throughout uh, West Africa, of which uh, the most uh, uh, common and perhaps the most important is the Ifan divination, uh, which uh, is uh, associated with the Yorubas, but which is uh, found in uh, many other societies. These, in brief, are some of the, uh, uh, the uh, categories of uh, traditional African religion, which was existing before the Europeans came. The traditional uh, religions I've just tried to uh, summarize show, first of all, the all-powerful nature of the supreme being. All uh, practitioners defer to him. He is the most important person, personage in the religious system of West Africans. This shows clearly that the belief in a supreme being was not a new one. It wasn't a new one. There are some people, uh, some travelers uh, uh, have reported that the idea of the supreme being or of God was introduced by the missionaries. This is not true. Uh, the idea of a supreme being existed in the traditional religious systems of uh, West Africans long before the missionaries came. Today, the names used by the missionaries to refer to their God, all these names are the names the uh, people were using for their own gods before the missionaries came. 
names like uh, Nyami, which is used by the Akans to refer to their god, was there before the missionaries came. They only said that uh, what, you are not, uh, what you are worshiping is not what we came to preach. Nyami is not uh, used like that. You use Nyami in this way. And the same applies to the uh, terms like Ngawa, which uh, the, uh, uh, the Mende of Sudalini use, the term Mao, for instance, which uh, the Evi and the Dahomians use as their supreme being. All these were traditional, uh, traditional names in the indigenous religious systems of uh, uh, these people. Another important aspect of uh, traditional uh, West African religion, which I've tried to summarize, is that uh, if the wishes of uh, these supernatural beings are disobeyed, it is believed that uh, there will be automatic uh, response by these supernatural forces. If you do bad, you'll be punished immediately. And uh, the results of uh, this, well, the uh, reactions of uh, the gods or the supernatural forces in this uh, particular field can be seen by anybody who goes to an West African uh, uh, village. You see uh, a mad woman going on the street and you are told as once that uh, he's uh, violated the rules of uh, a particular god, which is against adultery, for instance. You see somebody, uh, a mad, uh, a mad uh, man, and uh, you are told that this is what is done against uh, uh, this and that god. The point I'm trying to make is this, that uh, the, the results, uh, they are practical results resulting from the worship, disobedience, or otherwise of uh, these traditional supernatural beings. These are important aspects of uh, traditional West African religion. This was, in a broad sense, the type of the uh, religious organization existing in West Africa before the missionaries came. Societies in which kinship loomed very large. When the missionaries came, they never forced anyone to join uh, uh, them. In theory, they never forced anybody to join them. But, they, who, uh, but uh, those who did join them were expected to follow the rules laid down by the missionaries, whether or not they conform to biblical teaching. That is, the missionaries expected all those who became Christians to uh, obey certain rules. And of course, they were backed later on by the colonial uh, powers. Another point worth mentioning here is that the first schools in many parts of Africa were established and managed by the missionaries who, were, uh, who made baptism into their denominations a qualification for admission and enrollment. That is, uh, before you joined, uh, uh, before you entered a missionary school, you must be baptized. So for instance, I was baptized when I knew very little about Christianity. My uh, parents, uh, not being Christians, uh, I didn't know anything about Christianity before I was baptized. So almost uh, all uh, early school attendants were perforce members in varying degrees of devotion of these missionary institutions. The effects of Christianity on religion and society are many and varied, but uh, a few uh, generalizations can be uh, made. First of all, uh, it's obvious that Christianity is an alien institution, and its effects cannot help enhance traditional society. It is an alien institution, and therefore, it can only adversely affect the society in which it was introduced. At best, it can modify the society, but it can also altogether change it. Whatever effects it will have, however, will depend, uh, will depend on uh, its relative success uh, uh, in the, uh, the family, the tribe, or the nation. As an initial comment, you may say that its main effect has been to alienate its adherents from uh, their traditional beliefs. 
This, of course, is a truism. The question is to what extent are those adherents committed in their Christian beliefs? This question can only be answered with reference to uh, uh, many other variables. The, uh, the background of uh, the, the individuals involved, the religious beliefs of their, uh, of their parents, and uh, the degree of uh, education they attain, and so on and so forth. But studies conducted uh, in a number of societies uh, in West Africa, especially in Ghana, uh, suggest that uh, African Christians do not have much faith in Christianity when faced with uh, a crisis. African Christians do not have much uh, faith in Christianity when faced uh, with uh, a crisis. Uh, I think it was uh, Nietzsche who said that uh, Christianity was uh, only a thin veneer in uh, Europe because it was introduced against the wishes of the Europeans. Busia, in a study of uh, Ashanti, came to the same conclusion when he described Christianity in that area as a thin veneer. Brokenshire, in a study of another Ghanaian community, came to a similar conclusion when he says that uh, in Latte, which he studied, the Christians practice their traditional religious beliefs side by side those of Christianity. The question then is whether we can call uh, or whether a person can remain a Christian by practicing traditional or indigenous African religion as well as uh, Christianity. The Christian God, we are told, is a jealous one and it cannot share uh, its uh, following with uh, others. So when you are a Christian, you are not allowed to, uh, to, uh, to practice uh, any other religion. You must keep to Christianity. Why, we may ask, uh, do the uh, Christians don't have faith in Christianity? when faced with a crisis. Traditional religion, as I've tried to show, has taught uh, the Africans that uh, results are what makes a religion. And as I said already, there are instances to show every man living in a West African village that uh, religion actually works. Violation results in a number of uh, ailments and uh, other misfortunes. The, uh, the other explanation is that uh, Christians want to know the causes of their misfortunes. That is, African Christians want to know the causes of their misfortune. This definition provides in the indigenous uh, religion, but it doesn't in uh, Christianity. But it is not only in times of uh, crisis that uh, Christianity has been found uh, wanting. The missionary's attitude to life in general, the, the, that is the, the, the missionary's attitude to life uh, in general and the way they presented Christianity to uh, the Africans also have something to do with this. Christians, were forbidden to do things which had nothing to do with religion. In other words, the Christians, that the Christian missionaries found certain things incompatible with religion and wanted to change them. But they uh, failed to distinguish between purely religious practices and uh, purely social practices. Although in a number of cases, the two will uh, merge uh, it would be very difficult to, uh, uh, to differentiate between a purely social uh, uh, practice and a purely social religious practice. There are certain areas which uh, didn't affect uh, traditional religion to such an extent as to uh, merit the treatment uh, given out to, to them. For instance, Christians were forbidden to take part in indigenous dancing and uh, drumming in performing ceremonies associated with the various life crises, even from uh, 
taking alcoholic drinks. I remember very well when we attended school. Uh, whenever on our way back uh, from school, uh, we stopped uh, by the uh, uh, roadside to watch people dancing. The following, you must expect at least 12 lashes on your back. In some societies, they were segregated. The uh, Christians were segregated in areas reserved for them in their settlement called Salem's. This, the Christians did, uh, did without uh, reference to the traditional social setup. That is, without reference to the social patterns. Relatives were scattered, brother from brother, children from their parents, and uh, so on. Another reason why Christianity uh, didn't get a firm hold on the African, the West African, was that uh, it was opposed to many traditional beliefs uh, which are not uh, necessarily uh, of religious character. For instance, monogamy was, uh, was preached by the uh, Christians, although uh, it has not been found in the Bible that uh, Christianity uh, uh, supports this, uh, 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 Christianity is opposed to polygamy. There is also <laughs> their emphasis on the marital bond at the expense of the kinship bond. Traditionally, Africans believe that uh, the uh, kinship bond per se is uh, more important and therefore must be held sacred uh, the expense of the marital bond. But Christianity was teaching otherwise. I already mentioned that uh, Christianity, uh, uh, it was through uh, the missionaries that the first schools uh, uh, were introduced in many parts of uh, uh, Africa. At first, the Christians uh, were, the Christian missionaries were interested when they established their schools in training people to help them propagate the gospel. This was their main aim for establishing schools. Secondly, it became necessary for the Christians, uh, the Christian missionaries to train uh, people who went to school uh, to help in the uh, commercial houses established by the Europeans. And later on, they depended on them, they, they, the colonial service depended on the mission schools to train people for uh, employment in the colonial service. From the word go, therefore, emphasis was on literacy. Literacy per se also opposed to uh, training people to understand more their environment and to help them uh, in a more meaningful way to uh, assist uh, their parents and their society in uh, improving that society. Because emphasis was uh, on uh, literacy per se and uh, no inspiration was taken from uh, traditional institutions, uh, it wasn't found necessary also to, uh, to teach the, uh, the pupils through the medium of their own institutions. So it was necessary, for instance, to learn foreign history and foreign institutions, whilst, uh, foreign, uh, whilst uh, uh, local institutions were left untouched. Until uh, very recently, uh, a school leaver could uh, know all about uh, the American War of Independence, or the uh, uh, America, uh, American Civil War, how Congress works, the House of Parliament, European etiquette, table manners, ballroom dancing, and all. He will know all this uh, without uh, knowing a thing about the way his own society is organized, or how to do uh, one or two steps in his own uh, uh, indigenous uh, dance. And of course, as I said already, uh, they were not taught through the medium of their institutions, uh, their own institutions. Rhythmetic, rhythmetic problems were phrased in apples, snowballs, and so on. Although uh, they never saw these things uh, before. And of course, they are forbidden to participate in uh, social and recreational activities they had been used to. As a result, uh, 
school leavers uh, find it uh, very difficult to fit into uh, their societies when they finish school. And of, um, and of course, because of this, uh, they cannot remain in their communities after school. They have to go out to find clerical white collar jobs elsewhere. They get out knowing very well uh, very, very little about their society and therefore they cannot uh, understand their society. This follows already from what uh, I've said, but they understand European ways. <coughs> now, because of all this, Christianity generated uh, a lot of uh, uh, misunderstanding in the uh, society. Many people speak of uh, Christian Christianity destroying our traditional institutions. These are some of the things they refer to when they make uh, these, uh, these points. Well, what I've been saying does not mean, of course, that uh, we haven't got devoted Christians. Sometimes uh, you get uh, Christians, African Christians, who are devoted. But the, the strength of the point uh, uh, be made is that uh, even among the so-called devoted Christians, it is common to hear them uh, saying, when faced with serious sickness, serious situations, that this is a case for traditional healers. Christianity cannot save us, or Christianity cannot save me. And they go to uh, these uh, traditional healers to, uh, to be healed, and so on. Well, what I have been saying so far uh, shows that uh, Christianity as a religion, at least in its traditional form, that is as practiced by the Orthodox churches, has very little to offer the Africans. And it seems uh, the Christian churches themselves are realizing this, that Christianity has failed uh, in its Orthodox form. And uh, recently, about uh, 20 years ago, uh, they started a series of uh, what uh, are called the spiritual movements, as I said, uh, have uh, developed as a result of the, the uh, failures of the Orthodox churches. Now, uh, the nature of uh, the organization of these syncretic churches or spiritual movements, uh, as well as their, their activities, uh, can testify to the claims I'm making that uh, they have developed as a result of the failings of uh, the Orthodox churches. These are some of the basic point, uh, facts about uh, these uh, syncretic and religious uh, and uh, spiritual churches. Usually, they have a founder who is also the leader and perhaps the most powerful in organization and uh, uh, that is uh, most powerful in terms of organization and in terms of uh, supernatural power. They usually have a meeting place, uh, which is not always elegant, as elegant as uh, the uh, Orthodox churches, where they meet three or four times uh, a week. Drumming and dancing, usually to traditional music, is the regular uh, feature. And it's considered very, very important. This uh, is an important reaction uh, to the uh, uh, Orthodox churches. They use drums, rattles, and everything the traditionalists do in the uh, in the indigenous drumming, healing and uh, concentrated prayer, prayers are considered very important. This is what the Orthodox uh, churches like. Several examples of this can be found uh, by watching them, healing and so on. They are also uh, uh, very much. Uh, uh, concerned with uh, possession, possession by the spirits. Possession by spirits is an important aspect of them. Membership of uh, these groups, mainly of the poor. They are mainly poor, though not limited to the poor. In fact, they count uh, uh, some very rich uh, among their membership. 
these rich men join uh, them mainly for health and other troubles uh, which uh, uh, their financial positions cannot help them, such as uh, uh, brush with the law or any other thing. It will be seen that uh, these objectives are not very different from uh, those of traditional religion. We may then ask, why do they not turn to traditional religious practices, but uh, have to uh, develop these uh, spiritual or syncretic movements? I think uh, the reasons are that, first of all, uh, despite uh, its faults, uh, positive values still attach to Christianity in many West African societies. Secondly, most of these people uh, who uh, join these uh, spiritual churches are nominal Christians in the first place before turning to uh, another. So uh, they prefer to, uh, to move to another Christian church instead of going back to the traditional uh, religions. Also, it seems, uh, seems to me that compared with the traditional or indigenous religions, the efficacy of their operations are much more in evidence. These are some of the, uh, the reasons which uh, uh, explain their uh, operation. It will be interesting to see the attitude of the Orthodox churches to these uh, syncretic and spiritual churches. Uh, their attitude uh, is expressed uh, mainly uh, in the form of the uneasiness with which they view these uh, societies. They are very uneasy about them because they know that they have been taking uh, the adherence from them. They have been losing their members to them. And also, the subscription stems from the fact that uh, uh, some of the founders have become very wealthy uh, at the expense of their, uh, their members, which subjects them to charges of uh, shady uh, dealings. Well, all these uh, points I've been making so far will uh, show that the missionaries, contrary to their claims, have not been uh, angels. Uh, there are a number of uh, flaws uh, in their operation, the most important being uh, the, the lack of understanding of the African and also the lack of sympathy for the African. I'm sure I've made a number of points which can form the basis of our discussion. Thank you. written sometimes by missionaries, sometimes by anthropologists, in which not only your own ethnic group, religion, but others in West Africa are termed or described as pagan and primitive. And I would like to know what your response is, both as a Ghanaian and as an anthropologist. How do you react when you find, let's say, your parents' religion described as either pagan or primitive? Well, I think all this is due to the lack of understanding I've uh, been mentioning. Uh, if you uh, study uh, many West African religions, uh, you will find that they are based on a very sound moral basis. They are moral foundations. And sometimes the morality expressed in the, the beliefs of these people uh, raise much higher than even Christianity. Uh, you just have to understand this, the theology, the uh, the uh, reasoning, the philosophy behind uh, uh, the beliefs to know their richness and uh, their moral basis. I think uh, it is due to a lack of understanding of our uh, beliefs, uh, which uh, led to these uh, uh, terms being applied to our religious system. As I mentioned clearly, uh, uh, there's a belief in a high God, which is the basis of Christian religion also. And. Uh, I don't see, actually, when you compare the beliefs of the Ashanti, for instance, and that of uh, 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 Judaism, I don't see any reason at all to differentiate the two. 
uh, even when Christianity came, uh, it didn't do uh, much to change the picture. At least uh, the number of people who now worship uh, indigenous uh, Akan religion m m far outnumber the number of, uh, which was originally worshiping uh, 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 the uh, Jehovah, which like uh, the, our, uh, our religious system is a tribal religion in the first place. You see, before it was, uh, 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 it was uh, uh, spread uh, all over the, the world, it was a tribal religion. Uh, first and foremost, it wasn't a well religion. You see. Any other questions? There must be. Uh, Sam? Uh, it differs from place to place. In Ghana, it was the uh, uh, missionaries from Germany uh, who came first uh, with, uh, that's Protestants. Uh, they came first and they established uh, uh, Calvinist uh, uh, lodges in uh, the various parts of the country before the, uh, before the, uh, the, the Catholics came. The Catholics came uh, uh, the Presbyterians came uh, about, the, the Protestants came about uh, the year 1840, during the 1840s. And uh, the uh, Catholics came much later, about 30 years later. Well, because uh, uh, of the operations, it would be easy to, uh, uh, to uh, look at them in terms of nationalism. But uh, there is no manifestation uh, other than the fact that they, uh, they are uh, more indigenous in outlook. There is nothing beyond this to show that they are more nationalistic. Uh, the, yeah, there's no, uh, there, there's nothing to show uh, that they have this, uh, in, in fact, in their utterances, in their uh, uh, philosophy, in their attitudes towards uh, the, uh, uh, in their attitudes towards the government and so on, you don't see that they are more nationalistic than the others, than say the traditional indigenous uh, religions. In fact, sometimes they actually come in conflict with uh, uh, with the governments because they, they will not obey certain uh, laws of the society, of the, of the, of the government. Well, I, I wouldn't like it to be restored. Uh, let me put it that way. If you want my personal uh, view, I, I, uh, I'm not a Christian. Uh, well, I'm, I've been baptized, but uh, I'm not a practicing Christian. And uh, I don't think it would be necessary for me to say that uh, Christianity should be, uh, uh, Christians, uh, Christianity's image should be improved in any way. But I think that uh, uh, they, they can learn a lot from uh, the uh, spiritual churches uh, because uh, the, uh, the Christian churches try to, uh, to relate their practices to the society. So you, you can see the society uh, uh, on the ground uh, in the activities of these, Christ uh, these spiritual churches. And it seems uh, they, they have actually, uh, the, Christian, uh, the Orthodox churches have actually uh, uh, taken some cue from this because uh, my recent observations show that uh, now they allow uh, this uh, traditional uh, indigenous songs and uh, 
music to be played in their churches, and this is proving very popular. You see, people, uh, Christians are now allowed to, uh, to take part in uh, uh, indigenous recreational and social activities, which they were not formally permitted to do. And I think this is uh, helping them. Uh, well, uh, as far as Islam is concerned, I don't think uh, uh, Christianity can learn anything from, uh, from it. Uh, uh, I say this because, uh, you see, the two are quite different uh, uh, institutions coming from uh, uh, different uh, uh, soci societies. Uh, Islam, came, Islam came from uh, uh, people whose social institutions are not very different from African social institutions. And they're teaching uh, in respect to basic African, certain basic African concepts, tally with the, the Africans' way of looking at their society. And therefore, they face a very little problem uh, in uh, gaining ground in West Africa. Uh, on the, uh, if they have to learn anything, it means they have to abandon certain uh, basic uh, 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 beliefs associated with them. And this, I don't think the Christians themselves will, uh, will like to do. For instance, one of the greatest bones of contention between the uh, Africans and uh, the Christians was uh, polygamy. You see, polygamy, which uh, uh, the Africans uh, refused to, uh, uh, to leave, to abandon. Whereas uh, Islam allows this and therefore uh, face very little uh, problem uh, with the elders and they were very easily converted. I mean, when the uh, uh, when the uh, uh, when the Christians uh, started to react against Christianity, or what? Uh, You know, I think uh, uh, my position is that uh, Christianity has never uh, got a foothold in, uh, in West Africa. This is the point I've been making. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I agree with the basis of your question, you see, uh, because uh, uh, 
Uh, even right now, I think the number of uh, uh, Christians, at least nominal Christians, is increasing. You see, every decade sees an increase in the number of Christians or the proportion of the population which becomes uh, Christians. But uh, this numerical uh, strength is not reflected in the quality uh, of their beliefs in Christianity. You see? No, even if you take the orthodox churches, increases, uh, they are, they, yeah. The numbers are increasing, but mm. the numbers you're including, those people in that. I'm including, uh, I'm including both the, uh, uh, the spiritual and the orthodox churches. But my point is also that even if you leave out the syncretic spiritual churches, uh, the, number of, the number of Christians is still increasing. The number of, the, uh, the number of orthodox Christians is also increasing. This is because uh, although uh, now no, no missionary will expect a baptism or conversion into their faith, uh, they will not expect this to precede enrollment in their churches. Still many people uh, feel that uh, when you attend a school, you must get baptized, and they do, they do get baptized. You see, this has not been uh, completely abandoned. And I'm sorry I can't uh, help because I don't, uh, I don't uh, believe that there has been a time when Christianity was very powerful and then started to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to decay. I don't believe that. I may be wrong, but uh, I, don't, uh, I don't believe it. Is, uh, with their leaders uh, uh, accept Christianity, political uh, leaders, for instance. Mm -hmm. Does that make your uh, actually your ability in this fight? No, 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 no. Of course, uh, uh, when uh, uh, sociologists are uh, categorizing uh, people according to class and so on, they place the bishop. Uh, alongside uh, the uh, most important person in society, saying that well, wealth is not the only important thing. Uh, the bishop is respected and so on, and therefore he must be placed alongside, uh, say, the, the prime minister or the ministers and so on in society. But uh, uh, beyond that, uh, these people don't get uh, any uh, social standing. And ordinary priests will not uh, get any recognition uh, uh, the society. Of course, in the villages, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the priest may be uh, uh, an important person because uh, he will be solving problems for... Uh, yes, what, what are they most worried about in terms of the education? Uh, is, it, is it education? Um, is it denomination of the education? Is it uh, general widespread in the government? Development? Uh, well, the government is uh, responsible for all the educational, uh, most of the educational institutions in the country. But within this overall, uh, overall supervision of the government, you have uh, the various denominations uh, governing, uh, uh, administ uh, administering their, their schools. They, they have to carry out the government's policy, but in religious instructions, they are, uh, they are free to, uh, to give whatever religious instructions they, they want to give, you see. And uh, there has been uh, a lot of uh, uh, argument between uh, the government and the, uh, uh, the missionaries whether the schools should be taken over by the government. Uh, so far, the, this has not been resolved. But I think eventually uh, the government will have to take over this.
Well, uh, you mean, uh, are you referring to the Orthodox churches as the official religions or what? No, I'm referring to the Is it official? These are traditional, these are traditional believers. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, what uh, you are saying uh, does not uh, derive directly from what I said. What I said is that uh, it is believed that uh, automatic uh, retribution follows uh, violations of uh, indigenous uh, religious cause and, uh, and uh, gods. You see, if you violate the, their rules, you'll be punished. That's what I'm saying. Oh yes, yeah, when you when you join uh, a traditional religion, they will uh, count. Uh, they will narrate all the things uh, you have to do or you don't have to do to you. You see, and if you violate any of them, you'll be punished. You, they will they will narrate all, everything uh, everything for you that uh, you mustn't eat this on uh, on a particular date. You mustn't commit adultery. You uh, you have to uh, uh, to uh, treat a number of objects as taboo, and so on and so forth. And if you violate any of this, you will be punished. No, no, no. The, these are supernatural punishments. Well, no, no, we, uh, well, what I'm saying is that, you see, it happens automatically. So if uh, a person is, uh, uh, so if uh, no misfortune is uh, happening to the person, then it means he hasn't committed any offense. <laughs> What? In traditional religion, this will not happen. Yeah. Well, the uh, the customs differ from place to place, of course. Yeah, but go ahead. Yeah, there was human sacrifice. Uh, do you want to develop that? Because I'm, I'm sure you have a reason for asking the question. It's not only a question of fact. You want. Uh, yeah. Yes, of course. There are certain. Uh, uh, I don't. I would like to uh, to follow your argument, but I would like to make this point. There are certain things uh, which are forbidden uh, uh, the whole to the whole society. There are certain things the whole society uh, uh, must not do, or certain things which done which, when done in public 
will bring uh, uh, certain retribution to the whole society. And uh, when these things uh, are found out, they are punished. Because the punishment is uh, supposed to preempt uh, what uh, uh, supernatural, uh, uh, supernatural sanctions were followed. The uh, aim there is uh, to prevent, to forestall the, the gods from taking their own action. See, so, for instance, uh, among the Ashanti, you are not expected to have sex uh, on the ground. You see, this was supposed to be very, very bad. And uh, when you are found doing this, that is in the bush, for instance. If you are found doing that, uh, you will you will be punished. You may even be killed because you are bringing uh, a disaster on the on the state, and you must be punished. And if you are not punished, then it is believed that the uh, the earth will uh, will uh, exert uh, her own uh, uh, her own retribution on the society. No, I haven't uh, looked at the problem uh, uh, from this angle uh, uh, before. Uh, and uh, uh, I think it would be interesting to, to look at uh, this uh, from the point of view of the Ashantis. But uh, in the area which I study directly, uh, I don't see any uh, decline uh, in the presentation of this, uh, um, of uh, traditional religion in art form. Although I've also seen that uh, Christian influence have uh, penetrated into people's uh, attitude towards uh, art forms and so on and so forth. Can I make a point on that too? Oh, yeah, you studied the uh, Ashanti, perhaps you. Mosha and I have 